Bible or the Word of God change you alone. It's one thing to let the pastor lay hands on you. It's another thing for you to come to the altar. It's another thing for you to read your Bible. It's another, but can the Word do it? Alone. See, because the pastor may not get up out of bed at 2 in the morning and come to your house and pray for you. <laughs> but I'll tell you what you can do. Reach over there on the table. And grab that little book that say Holy Bible. It'll be there. That's the word of God. And if you got something that you can trust. More than you can the word of God. Then God's word can't fully change you. It can only lead you to the. What's that old saying? You can leave a horse to the water. But you can't make him drink. How long have we been in the church? I'm talking about good Christians. I'm not talking about people that, that's just playing church. I'm talking about good people. But how has the word changed you where you yourself can see it? You have to see it. You don't need somebody to say, oh my goodness, you've done changed. That's all good. But can you look in the mirror and say to yourself, you know what? You're not anything like you used to be. Now that was on Monday. <coughs> Let's look at it on Tuesday and see do you have the same testimony? Satan don't waste no time. How many people know when Jesus said the sower soweth the word? And that the people receive it with Enon, meaning you received it with what? Joy. Joy. Peace. You love the word, but immediately. Satan comes along and steals the word from you. Amen? No. He said Satan comes immediately and steals the word out of your heart. Why? Because it was planted on what ground? Stony ground. You didn't have much earth. Why is that? I don't come to church enough. Pastor Sweet, I'm getting tired of church. Pastor's telling me to come to church. They're going to keep on telling you if he loves you. If he loves you, he's going to keep telling you to come to church. That's how I got saved by my wife going to church when I didn't want her to go. Now, I was saved. I was saved, either, but going to church like she was going. And I remember one time I just, just, I just ran out and said, you know what? You keep speaking in this tongue. And all something I told her, I don't know what it was, honey. And, and she turned around and looked at me and said, how many meals have you missed? How many of your clothes has not been washed? What is it that I don't do that I was doing before I got saved? She said, if I have to make a choice. I ain't going to tell you all what else she said. <laughs> but it, it, it shook me. That's why I'm here today, I believe. <laughs> If I got to make a choice, there ain't going to be no contest. <laughs> I'm going to church. Amen. I remember when Pam and Willette, that is it right here. Doc will say, y'all going to church. Well, I don't have the other kids don't go to church. She said, I'll tell you what. Yeah, that's right. Daddy not going. <laughs> and I'm saying, saints. I had to accept Jesus to save me, but I didn't think I had to do all this. <laughs> and it took me three or four years to, to quit smoking. I quit drinking right away. To use the bad language, for my temper will not all just carry on. Why? Because when they was in church, and I should have been in church, I thought that being home drinking an old cold bud no, I didn't drink Budweiser. What did I drink? I don't know what it was. Oh, Michelob. Michelob. Yeah. <laughs> what did Pam say? Sliss was all right, but... <laughs> I was a Michelob man. Yeah. Anyway, look how long it took me, and I almost backslid. I almost backslid. Because the man across the street, you remember Rock? Give parties. 
And I would tell Doc, I'm going over there to witness, but that, that ain't what I want to do. <laughs> she said, you better stay out from over there. Honey, I'm just going to witness. And the first night that I went, this woman came in dressed in black. And she looked at me, because I had received Jesus. But I just didn't believe you had to do all of what my wife was doing. She turned around and looked at me and said, <laughs> I've told you all the story. And I said, Jesus! <laughs> she hit the floor, boom! And then her fingers, nails grew. And hair came on her face. I said, that's it? <laughs> you ain't got to tell me not to go to your party no more. That was the end of my party. But I, what am I trying to tell you? That Jesus Christ has no limit to the way that he have to train our old stubborn selves up. Didn't have to go through all of that. But I went through it because I had a little more flesh than I had Jesus. And this is what I want to get into you, church. Can the word change you or does God have to go through different kind of ways to get you to change and obey him? Look what happened here in the 13th verse, our uh, 15th verse. Verse 15. Yes. For this people's heart is wax gross. Watch out. Hold on. Now, if somebody, if I were to walk down and go to say maybe 10 people right now and say, you know what? Your heart is wax gross. You got a hard heart. I wonder, would you get up or would you hit me or would you just say, you don't know what you're talking about or what would you say? That would be the right thing to say. But I know humans. Well, about when won't you try it? I haven't gone crazy yet. <laughs> you mess with Christians and see what Christians will do. I'm not talking about you, I'm just talking at you. See if you can hear this. What does God? What what was that were you saying this morning? What does God have to do? What more does God have to do? I'm a, I, I thank God for you guys for where you are. But when God stare you in the face and say, could you have been a better witness? Could you have taken what I've given you? Your talent, your looks even. How many people know that a good looking woman can get more done at the car wash than an undressed woman? I notice when I go to the car wash, they just wash my car and say, here, here the keys. When my wife go, they say, are you satisfied? Because <laughs> I don't think she ever been satisfied. She always tell them, no, damn, that goes down the street. <laughs> when they see her coming, you see them huddling. <laughs> do y'all see, do y'all y'all get this? What I'm talking about, man. The world see your goodness. They can't help but get involved in it. Amen. They see glory over you. I know my wife is, 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 don't look bad, but my wife, the couple of minutes that I see her again ain't because she that, that blame pretty. <laughs> yeah, she look good, but a couple of minutes don't come because she that pretty. That woman got the, uh, a glow about her that the world cannot resist. And many of you, some of you all have it. But you hide it. You won't take, let it loose. In different areas. You may not be so good looking, but you got it. And that's what God is. So I didn't give you that it for you to sit on it. I want you to tell somebody. I want you to take and, and rearrange some things. Shoot from the hip. Because God got something for you. What does he have to do to get us to do what we know we should do? 